Hi everyone and welcome to my end of the year TBR. So I know it's a little bit early. Most of these videos are being uploaded in November, December and it's now just um, the first week of September uh, when I'm uploading it. And I'm filming this on the 31st of August. Uh, that's the day that for me the summer ends and I'm very pleasantly stepped into the autumn months which I love a little bit more. And the reason why I'm filming this video a little bit earlier is because last year I filmed it in November and I had a very large TBR file that um, I most of them I didn't finish. So I still have a very large TBR file and this year I wanted to start a little bit earlier working on it. I'm still not near my goal 50 books for this year but that's not the biggest reason because 50 books is just a number for me it's more for me about certain books that I really want to read and to finish a particular trilogy that I've been reading now for two years um, and so it gets a little bit ridiculous I just want to read the final book and yeah I just wanted to start early and September is for me when the spooky months are starting so this list will contain uh, a lot of spooky books, gothic novels, horror novels, but also other books uh, that I just want to finish. So yeah, I will show you what I'm currently reading uh, and these books obviously I want to finish before the end of the year. And then I will show you for every month what I want to read. Now one of my biggest problems is that I'm a mood reader. Uh, if I'm not in the mood uh, to read a book, I'm not going to read it and I'm definitely not going to enjoy it. So um, yeah, it is, it, it is a guideline. So the books that I really dedicated to read in a specific month, I will try to do that. Uh, but there are also, at the end, I will give a list of books that I'm interested in reading before the end of the year, but I still don't know where they fit in. So we will start out with the books that I'm currently reading and still have to finish. And I will start with the most difficult one, which is uh, The House of Leaves. Now, this is a reread for me, so I have already read this book in 2020, and I wanted to reread it this year because it's one of my favorite books of all time. It's, uh, it's a great book, but it gives me a lot of trouble to get through it. So, in 2020, I read this one in one month, in, in October, and I went into it without knowing what to expect and it, it just it was a very difficult book it was the most difficult book that i've ever read but i loved it and this year i i thought that i would start it in february yeah i read i think how far did i come in it uh 46 pages i read 46 pages i made some new notes in it and it was very suspenseful very interesting even though i have read it before it i it was like a new story to me that was opening up and that I, a lot of details that I have missed while I was reading it the first time. But the point is, uh, I got nightmares again from this book. So the, the first time that I was reading it, I got into like 100 pages without any trouble. And in the first 100 pages, I also had quite a difficulty to understand when the, where the story was going. And I was just like figuring out what the book was about. And after those 100 pages, I got not really nightmares, but trouble sleeping. And I just really wanted to finish the book um, because I was excited for the story, but I also didn't like how the book made me feel. So I tried to read it in one month and I completed that task. Towards the end, I didn't make any notes. I was just focused on the book and trying to finish the story. This time I already knew what the story was about, so I could focus more on the details. I think in five days of reading, I got again trouble sleeping because of the book and it's not nightmares it's very difficult to explain but it's just uh, this book occupies your mind and you just can't think about anything else and it's very difficult to fall asleep then so i stopped reading it for like a month or two maybe then i picked it up again started reading it again got the same problem and now we're in beginning of september and i really want to finish it before the end of the year so i i really don't know when i'm going to finish it and so far this is the only book wherein I have encountered such a problem. I never had this problem with any other books. Uh, some books can be, of course, very challenging. Others could be very like depressing and you feel like not really comfortable while reading it. This one is totally different. Uh, it's, it's unexplainable why it has such an effect on me. Um, but yeah, I, I hope to finish it. Then I have a couple of language learning books that I'm reading. So books in a different uh, language, not language learning textbooks, but just books in a different language. I have two in Spanish right now, and I have one that I'm sometimes reading, but uh, two that I definitely want to finish this year, which is uh, Harry Potter y la Piedra Filosofal. 
It's a book, um, the, the first book of Harry Potter series, and it's in Spanish. I started reading it on my uh, e-reader, and I read until chapter 3 in uh, the physical book. But yeah, um, I have to read the rest of it. And so far it, it is doable, but it is very challenging as well. And I'm also reading El Principito, which is the little prince in Spanish. And this one I'm on page 16 from the total of 91, 90, 93 pages. But as you can see, I have to look up certain, like a lot of words. And uh, I'm also reading this book on my reader and uh, also as a physical copy. So I think I will just continue reading it as physical books and not on my e-reader anymore and just finish these two and see how much I will understand. And then another language learning book that I'm reading is uh, Fushikita Gashiya and it's a Japanese book. So right now I'm page uh, 11 and I have to look up a lot of words. So it's going slowly. I do understand the story and even though I have to look up a lot of words, I understand the context of the story without looking up this words. So that's, that's good. Um, but yeah, I hope to finish it before the end of the year. It's, I think it, it will be a challenge, but it's doable. And I will see how far I will get in this four months. If I finish this once and I still have some time left, maybe I will read another one. But for now, this tree, I really want to get through and just um yeah <laughs> learn the language then i also start reading a philosophy book it's more like an introduction into philosophy and it's think by simon blackburn and i'm right now on page 44 so not really far and the preface of the book says that it's an introduction into philosophy but it is quite hard to read if you do not know the philosophers that blackburn is talking about or the text that he mentions it's um I think it's very difficult to get into. So in the beginning he talks about René Descartes, which I have read. I read this course on methods and meditations for my uh, university course. So it was a little bit easier to understand what uh, Blackburn was talking about. It made sense to me, but uh, he also mentions all the philosophers that I have not read and then it's difficult to get into. However, his writing is pretty interesting and not too uh, complex so that makes it better to get into so yeah i think i will try to finish it as well as soon as possible but it's a non-fiction so i always read non-fiction slower and the same goes for another non-fiction book that I i'm reading i forgot to get it from downstairs but it's spill over uh, and it's about uh, viruses um, pandemics infectious diseases very interesting but also something that i read very slowly however i would like to finish it this year <laughs> because i don't want to read it for more than a year i started in january i think so it would be nice if i have finished it um yeah before 2024 those were the only two known fictions that i'm currently reading then i have a book that i just started uh and it's orlando by virginia wolf and I, I love it, like it, the first pages are so interesting. I do have to say that I at first I had to uh, get used to her writing style. It's uh, very poetic and her sentences are very long and she describes the things that are happening in the environment and the people in the story very detailed. And sometimes I will encounter a word that I have never seen before. And right now I'm on page 20. And so far, a lot of things already have happened in the books. So yeah, for now, I enjoy it a lot. And I hope to finish it before the end of the week. And I think it's possible. It's not a lot of uh, pages. 221. So that should be doable. Then I'm also reading Fyodor Dostoevsky. Uh, and this is Brothers Kramazov. Uh, it's the Russian edition. And I'm not far in. Um, but I do hope to finish this book because it's it's really good. I'm on page 37 now. And a lot of things are happening in the story. So we have the father. We have the three sons that are getting together right now. To discuss uh, like the situation with the father and uh, their inheritance. And Dostoevsky writes like very philosophical. So there is a lot of sentences have a deeper meaning. I have to reread a lot of things. And because I'm reading it in Russian, it also takes me a little bit longer to get through it. I have mostly read for the last years in Dutch or English. So um, I have to get into it, like in reading uh, in Russian again. But so far, I have really liked the story and um, I hope to pick it up again. I think when I'm finished reading Orlando, I will continue reading this one. And I don't want to mix 
uh, the Paulus Karamazov of with House of Leaves for now because they're both books that I need my full concentration for so yeah I, I don't want to read those two together so I have to think about the planning how I'm going <laughs> to read these both books so my goal for now is to finish reading Orlando in a couple of days then pick up this one again and try to finish it in September as well and then see how far I will come with House of Leaves. So that's the plan for now, but obviously it can change. Uh, and I have other books that I want to read in September. So now we're getting to like my real TBR file and the first book on it. And I want to start reading it as, as well as soon as possible because it's quite a long book and it's The Return of the King, uh, which is the last book of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And I kind of have to finish this trilogy this year because I have started the Fellowship of the, of the Ring, I think in 2021. And then in 2022, I have read The Two Towers. So now I, I just, I have to finish this one. And I'm very excited to start reading Tolkien again because his writing is so beautiful. And even though I'm not much into fantasy, I like his writing and his stories and his characters and the world that he has built. So yeah, I, I cannot wait to start it. <laughs> and then I have also Animal Farm by George Orwell. It's a book that I uh, started reading um, I think two years ago and then came into page 40 and then stopped reading it. I don't know why uh, but I will start rereading it again and just from the beginning and this time hopefully finish it and that's also something that I want to do in September and it's only 94 pages so it should be easily uh, read in one day uh, but yeah we shall see. So these two for September and also Alice Adventures in Wonderland so Alice in Wonderland um, by Lewis Carroll and this is one of my favorite fairy tales but unfortunately I've not read the book from like cover to cover I have read some pages and fragments of the book but not the entire book so most of my knowledge about the story is from uh, the Disney movies which I loved but I would like to read the actual book and this is one of the illustrated editions that I have I have also a penguin edition it's not only Alice in Wonderland but also through the looking glass but for this year I will only focus on Alice in Wonderland and that will be all for September and I think it's more than enough uh, a lot of books to focus on and it, it some of them are quite big uh, but then we will move into October which is one of my favorite months to read horror and I tried to focus only on um, gothic and horror books so I have one I think dystopian novel which is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury uh, this one was on my last year's TBR but I didn't come around to read it so this year will be the year that I have finally read this book hopefully and it's also not very long uh, 150 pages so that should be doable for October and then I have also the picture of Dorian Gray which was also on the last year's TBR and uh, I've wanted to read this book for such a long time and every time I just don't read it don't pick it up I don't know why uh, because it's such a horror classic a gothic classic that everyone should read uh, if they're into horror so I don't know why it's such a neglected book by me <laughs> but uh, in October I will finally read it I promise and then I have The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury which is just um, a very short story for children so that shouldn't uh, be that difficult and then I have two more books for October which I don't have the physical copy for yet uh, and it's The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe and I want to read the story because uh, a new Netflix adaptation is coming out of the story and uh, it's from Mike Flanagan who also has made The Haunting of Hill House for Netflix and uh, Midnight Mass, The Haunting of Bly Manor and those are all the Netflix shows that I really enjoyed and just loved immediately so I have high expectations for the house of uh, for the fall of the house of Usher uh, however I would like to read the story that inspired this uh, TV show. So that one is on the list and also Dracula by Bram Stoker. It's a crime that I have not read this one yet uh, because it's also a classic, a horror classic, a gothic classic that I should have read years ago and I did start it as a child. I was like I don't know how old when I started uh, when I started reading it in Dutch but I didn't finish it because it was too scary for me at the time. I just I couldn't finish it. So hopefully in October I will be able to finally say that I've read Dracula uh, and I do have the physical edition which is this one uh, but it contains other stories as well but I think I'm going to buy the book where, with only 
uh, the story of Dracula itself from Penguin Classics and just read that one. And for now that will be all for October, which is four books. And I think I'm going to add House of Leaves to October and just continue the tradition of reading House of Leaves in October. So that would be five books in October. In November I only have one book, which makes it possible to read some of the longer books like uh, House of Leaves maybe throughout October and November. I think that would be the better planning for me to do. And for November, like I said, I only have one book, which is Carmilla by Sheridan Lafon. Lafon. I don't know exactly how her name is pronounced, but it's uh, the book that has inspired Dracula. So it's a book that came before Dracula. It's about a female vampire. Uh, it's not very long and <laughs> I'm just very excited to, to try it. A lot of people have uh, read it and there are like mixed reviews. Some people like it, some people hate it. But yeah, it's a cult classic. So I'm just, I'm very excited. And I think this copy is absolutely beautiful. And then for December, I also have two focus books, which is the Penguin Book of Christmas Stories. This one, I think it's quite interesting. It goes through the history of Christmas stories. Uh, so it starts out with Hans Anderson, but there are very many writers in here that I'm um, very excited about. Uh, also Ray Bradbury with the story The Gift. Uh, Shirley Jackson, A Visit to the Bank. No Charles Dickens, that would be weird. Let me see. Fyodor Dostoevsky, A Christmas Party and a Wedding. It should be very weird if it doesn't contain Charles Dickens uh, with his Christmas Carol, but um, yeah, who knows, maybe they didn't include that one. And also uh, Angela Carter, which I want to read soon. Um, it contains her story, The Ghost Ships. And I never knew that Fyodor Dostoevsky had a Christmas story. So that's a surprising find. But yeah, there's just a lot of Christmas stories from very famous writers. And I think it's perfect for December. And uh, my transition book into, into 2024 will be uh, the second part of a series that I really love, which is A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. Uh, R. Martin. And uh, yeah, the second book is A Clash of Kings. This one is very big. Uh, how many pages does it contain? Um, let me see. Almost a thousand pages. So this will be the book that I will start reading in December and then continue reading into January of 2024 and I think it will be a perfect book to end the year with because if you know the story behind like A Son of Ice and Fire it's all about the winter that is coming and uh, the the dark horrors and um, creatures that it takes with it uh, towards humans so it's very interesting and I, I just loved the first book so I have high expectations for the second one. So these were all the books that I have really planned in into uh, the months and my reading schedule but I have also all the books that I would like to read that I have not a planning for. So these will be the books that I just randomly start reading when I have the mood. And these are also the books that I wanted to read for uh, a Game of Tones book club which is hosted by Emmy Reads and Carol uh, by Emmy and Carolyn Reads. Uh, they doing it together the book club. And for now, I only have read one and a half because I have read The Catcher in the Rye last year, and it's on the list for this year. So I kind of ca counting that one. And I'm reading The Brothers Karamazov, which is also on the list. Um, but there are other books that I just haven't picked up yet. So in September, they will start reading. North Hanger Abbey by Jane Austen and I also want to really want to read it because it's like this gothic also spooky novel it's about this haunted abbey and our main character is visiting the abbey to because she is into horror and gothic romance so that should be interesting um, so I think I will try to pick this up between September and October it's not very long and then another book is The Stranger by Albert Camus so this was the book that I was supposed to read uh, after reading Dostoevsky, but I think, but I, yeah, I haven't read it and I haven't finished Dostoevsky yet. Hopefully I will still be able to read it before the end of the year, but um, I don't know, maybe. And then the, the other books on this list, I do not have the physical copy of, which is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I do have the physical copy downstairs, uh, which is a very beautiful edition, but I want to buy a paperback to read it because I want to make notes in it and I don't want to ruin the beautiful edition. Another book is Once There Was a War by John Steinbeck. 
Yeah, it's a book that was supposed to be read with uh, A Farewell to Arm by Ernst Hemingway. I have read A Farewell to Arms and I really liked it, but I haven't read Steinbeck's book, so maybe this year, but I'm, I'm not sure. Then a book by Charles Dickens, David Copperfield. Knowing Charles Dickens, I know it's going to be long, so I don't know if I will be able to read that one, but maybe. The Awakening, Twelve Nights by Shakespeare and Yevgeny Anegin, which I wanted to read in Russian by Alexander Pushkin. This is like the maybe pile. Maybe I will be able to read this book, but I'm not sure. But the books that I just bought recently for this book club, which are The Stranger and North Hanger Abbey, these ones I would like to fit in somewhere. And hopefully I will succeed. So these were all the books for now. And it's quite a list, so yeah, um, wish me luck. <laughs> And yeah, I will make a wrap up at the end of September and see how many books I have read. Uh, stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching and good luck with your readings for the end of the year. I hope you have a lot of spooky books and horror books on your list or gothic novels uh, or other books that you are very excited about. So let me know which books you really want to finish before uh, 2024. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.